Assignment 7-6. Let's go. I want you to integrate this indefinite or this definite integral 2 over x. So if this is a logarithm, this antiderivative, then when you take the derivative of the denominator, which is x, so the derivative is 1, look to see what it was before. So we need a 2 in front, so they stay equivalent. That the answer is going to be 2 times the logarithm of the denominator. And the challenge here is that uh, you can't forget the bars. So I always think of this. And so make sure, so this is a unique situation for an antiderivative, that you have the absolute value bars that protects the domain. And then it's uh, definite, so we have an uh, upper limit and a lower limit. So the last step then is to plug in the upper bound, subtract the lower bound. The absolute value bars are unnecessary then when it's a positive number that you're plugging in. But there's your answer. If you're asked to simplify it, are you asked to simplify it? No, that's good. Number two, uh, we're going to integrate from 1 to 3, uh, 4 over 2t subtract 1 oops, dt. So how would I do this? So the first thing I would do is take the derivative of the denominator. So the derivative of 2t subtract 1 is 2. That's the hook that we need. Now, to make these equivalent, what was it before divided by what it became? We need a 2 in front, so if you multiply it through, they're still equivalent. Then you can unhook this. 2 is part of it, and what you see in the denominator is going to be inside that natural logarithm. The last step is to plug in, so there's an upper limit and lower limit, so make sure you plug in 3. and plug in 1. Now ln 1 is actually 0, so the answer actually is 2 ln 5. But that's fine, the way it looks too. Number 3. Let's see how this works. All right feel like I'm crooked. Is that like straighter? I don't know. I guess it doesn't matter. Okay. Crooked or not, here I go. Uh, number three. Integrate from negative one to positive one. Four to the exponent x plus one dx. Oop. How would you do that? So take the derivative. So this integration is one of an exponential. So if you're doing the antiderivative x, look at the exponent and take the derivative. Well, the derivative of the exponent is 1. So we don't need a hook to unhook. It's ready to go. So the rule for this is you copy it down, and then you divide by ln 4. That's the rule. And then you're integrating from negative 1 to positive 1. So plug in the upper limit. Subtract, plug in the lower limit. Done. Number 4. I'm integrating from 0 to 2, e to the negative 2x dx. So practicing integration of both exponentials and logarithms. So the rule for e is you copy it. But we have a hook here. So the derivative of e to the negative 2x. So the derivative of negative 2x is negative 2. We need that hook for us to do the antiderivative. So we need the fraction negative 1 half to undo that so they stay the same. Then you can unhook this 
and we have negative a half e to the negative x just to copy it and then we are integrating from 0 to 2 so plug in 2 the upper limit subtract the lower limit done and it becomes adding because a negative and a negative makes it adding number five All right, we're integrating e to the x squared, subtract 1, times x dx. So the derivative of the exponent is 2x. It was 1x, now it's 2x, so we need a half. Now you can unhook that. The rule for E is to copy it. And don't forget the constant. So this one's an indefinite integral. So we don't have that extra step at the end to substitute in. Number six. So I'm integrating X over x squared. So when I have a fraction like this, to set this up, I'm going to take the derivative of the denominator, which is 2x. That's the hook that I need. Make sure you remember the hook is in the numerator. Now look at both numerators. I need a 1 half, so if I multiply it, it stays the same. Then you can unhook the numerator, and we have 1 half. Now the denominator is going to be in a logarithm and we can't forget the bars so one way to remember this is the candy bars so the absolute value and the constant so when you do the antiderivative with a logarithm ln it needs the absolute value bars that protects the domain because you can't have a negative number inside the logarithm so this allows the domain to be protected where you could have both negative and positive numbers for x now uh, in terms of that number seven This one looks so similar, but it's not. So how do I answer this? Even though it looks similar, see if I take the derivative of the denominator, that, that's not gonna help me. But instead I see a monomial. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna write this as two fractions, x squared over x and minus one over x. So that monomial, I'm gonna write as two fractions. I'm gonna simplify this. So x squared over x is one x. And 1 over x, I'm going to leave because I know what the rule is for 1 over x. So when I do the antiderivative here, add 1 to the exponent and divide, the antiderivative of 1 over x is ln, but don't forget the candy bars. Get it? And you're done. So the key is remember absolute value when you do the uh, antiderivative and never forget the constant when doing an indefinite integral. 8. So I got y squared, subtract 3y, plus 2, 4y, subtract 6. So here's the situation. Take the derivative of the denominator. That is 2y, subtract 3. And then think. Look at the two numerators. What constant would make them equivalent? So what do I need in front so it stays the same? And the answer is 2. If I multiply it times 2, they would be equivalent. So I need a 2. Then I can unhook this. The answer is going to start with 2 ln the denominator and then the candy. So the candy bar is done. Number 9. So, here's the situation with number 9. If you have a fraction and the degrees match, 
or the degree on top is bigger than the bottom and you're not able to separate it into multiple fractions. Uh, you're going to have to do some algebra before you can integrate. You see, if I take the derivative of the denominator, the terms don't match and it's not going to help me. So I notice the degrees are the same. So what I have to do, and you can actually use synthetic division if you want to divide because it's a linear denominator, but we'll practice long division. This is what it would look like if you were dividing. So x goes into x once, and then it's the remainder that becomes important. So be careful when you subtract a negative. It's 2. So the answer, which is 1, and then the remainder, which is 2, goes over what the divisor, what you're dividing by. So do you have this ability? Oh, and make sure you write down the integration sign there. So do you have the ability to do long division to be able to write it in a way where you can then integrate it? So the integration of 1 is x. The integration of x subtract 1. Well, if you take the derivative of that, it should be a 1 with a 2 in front. But the more we practice, you just need a 2 in front of that logarithm to be able to do it. So what's the derivative of 2 ln x subtract 1? It's 2 over x subtract 1. So when it's a simple constant in the numerator, you can just write it. 2 times ln x subtract 1. Just make, make sure you remember the candy bars when you write it out. Number 10. In number 10, we're integrating. It's negative 1 over x plus 1 cubed. Now, if I try to take the derivative of the denominator and put it on top, the terms won't match. So here's a situation where we're actually going to write it calculus friendly. The derivative of the base is 1, so I don't need it. So this negative can stay there, or you can put that negative in front. All I need to do is the anti-power rules. It means i got to add 1 which is negative 2, and divide. And don't forget the candy. And a negative divided by negative would be positive. I was just looking at the answer key. And it had a positive in front, but it makes sense it's positive because a negative divided by a negative is positive. All right, 11. And number 11, we're integrating. We're going to make this calculus friendly right away. So we have 3u, and then the denominator is u squared plus 1. And then we're going to write that to the exponent, negative 1 third du. So in this situation, so not every fraction leads to a logarithm. So we're just practicing when we have a logarithm and when we don't. Uh, the derivative of that base is 2u. That's the hook on that I need. What I had was 3u. So what was it before over what it became? Or the other way around. No, like that. What was it before? over what it became. So 3 halves, if I multiply this, the 2's would divide out and they are equivalent. Then you can unhook the 2u and then add 1 to the exponent. And then instead of dividing times the reciprocal. And then don't forget the candy. And again, it's 9 over 4 if you want it to be that. Uh, number 11. That was number 11. Number 12. All right, I'm going to write number 12, calculus friendly, so I can understand it a little bit better. So it's ln x to the 1 half. And then instead of writing it as over x, I'm going to write it as times 1 over x. So I want you to see that they're equivalent, what I just did. So instead of the square root, it's ln x to the half. Instead of over x, I go times 1 over x. They're the same thing. But what's the derivative of ln x? It's 1 over x. So the hook is there. So I can unhook this. And then the rule is just add 1 to the exponent. 
and then divide or the reciprocal and then don't forget the candy. Number 13. When taking antiderivatives, it's just a little more fun and interesting than just following a derivative rule. All right, integrate. Now, I see 2. All right, let's rearrange this. Do you see that 2? I'm going to write that 2 in front of the integration sign. You see the x? I'm going to write that as 1 over x because 1 over x is a great indicator for when you take the derivative here, I need 1 over x. And then I'm going to write 1 plus ln x to the exponent negative 5 so that it's calculus friendly. Then I'm going to take the derivative of the base is 1 over x. So that actually works. So we're going to unhook it. We have a 2 in front. And then I'm going to add 1 to the exponent. And then divide. And then don't forget the candy. Again, I'm always checking to make sure I did it right. All right, number 14. 14 is a good one. I just saw the answer key. So, let's do this. Oops, I didn't mean that button. Here, this is the button I meant. That's synergy. No grades there. All right, I don't think. Number 14. Uh, number 14, we're integrating 4 over 2 plus root x dx. All right, it's kind of a challenging situation. So the derivative of the denominator, mm -mm, I can't write it. I can't divide it. Like, I don't know where to go here. One idea could be to do the, um, what's called the conjugate, multiply top and bottom by 2 minus root x. But we're going to use the technique of u substitution. So we're going to let u equal the square root of x. Which is the same as x to the half. And then the derivative of u would be 1 half x to the negative a half dx. Oh, and what is x equal? So if I square both sides, x is actually equal to u squared. But I actually don't need this one because there's no x here for me to worry about. So I'm going to come back here. The square root of x is u. And then dx is, oh, here, you know what I did need to do? So not take the derivative here. So get x by itself and then take the derivative. And I get 2u du. That's what I needed. So I need a 2u du here to replace. So dx becomes 2u du, and we're off and running. All right. Next. I'm just making sure we're not going down a rabbit hole. So now I notice the degrees are the same. So now I got to divide. So u goes into 8u uh, eight times. That's 8u plus 16. Subtract, and I get negative 16. So I can rewrite this as 8. And it's negative 16, so I'm going to subtract 16 over 2 plus u. It's a great skill to have to be able to do long division. So the remainder over what you're dividing by. Now, the antiderivative of 8 is 8u. The antiderivative here, see the negative 16? So it's going to be negative 16 ln 2 plus u plus c. So because it's an indefinite integral, the last step is to take out the u and put in a root x, because that's what u equals. And there's the antiderivative of what we started with. So 
if you just have a constant in the numerator, you can just write with the constant in front and ln of what you see in the denominator. As long as what's in the denominator, if you took the derivative, the hook on you need is one. So if it was different, then you'd have to be careful what number or fraction you'd have there. Number 15. All right, this one's different. It says find the inverse and then sketch and it's inverse on the same plane. Okay, so find the inverse and then sketch them. I can do that. You can do that. So the inverse here would be x equals ln negative y. To get y by itself, I write it exponentially. So what's inside the logarithm is negative y. And then the base for ln is e to the exponent x. And then divide by negative 1. So you have negative e to the negative x is the inverse that we're talking about. So if we graph this, neg ln x would kind of look like this if I graph ln x. But it's been reflected over the y-axis. So it's going to look like this. So there's the original with an asymptote. And then negative e to the x would have looked like curving up, but it's been reflected down. So it kind of looks like that. So this is e to negative e to the x. And this is the logarithm that goes with it. And if you did draw this, they would reflect. It's a little bit confusing. We're going to move on. Number 16. All right. Again, can you do the inverse graphing and the whole bit? So let's try it. Not be intimidated by it. So what's the inverse here? We're going to write down x equals e to the 2y plus 1. We're going to subtract 1. We're going to write this as a logarithm, which is 2y ln x subtract 1. And then we're going to divide by 2. So the inverse of g is ln x subtract 1 uh, divided by 2. So if I sketch this, e to the 2x plus 1, instead of having an intercept at 1, everything's been shifted up 1. So it's at like 2. And then the 2x just creates a horizontal uh, compression. So it's a little bit wider than normal. But there's an asymptote at 1. So there's e to the 2x. Now the logarithm is going to have an asymptote at positive 1. And it's been shifted over here, so this point at 2, 0. And there's the inverse. And again, it would reflect over the line y equals x. Number 17. Simplify without using a calculator. So can you evaluate a logarithm? I hope so. So what exponent makes this true? 3 to the exponent negative 3 is 1 over 27. Done. You're just finding the exponent that makes it true. 18, we're going to simplify it. So e to the 10 over e to the 3 is e to the 7 because you subtract it. That 7 can be written in front of the logarithm. Oops. So the, this is the power property where that 7 can be a product. Ln e is just 1. So it's just 7 times 1. So that whole thing simplifies to 7. So this is a helpful one to remember that ln e is equal to 1 when that comes up. Number 19. In number 19, it says use uh, log properties to expand that. Let's do that. So I'm going to write it actually calculus friendly. I'm going to write it as y subtract 1 to the 1 half. 
and remember my properties. So if you're multiplying, you're adding, and the exponent goes in front. So it's ln x plus ln y minus 1, and that 1 half is written as a product in front. Number 20 is the same kind of question. Use properties to write that, 2 log p subtract log q subtract log r to write that as one logarithm. So if something's being multiplied in front of the logarithm, it's an exponent. The 3 is the exponent. And for r, has an exponent 1 or none. Um, subtracting means it's going to be in the denominator. So it's q cubed and just r. And that's written as one logarithm. So understanding subtracting, they both are. They both belong in the denominator. Uh, the number in front being multiplied becomes the exponent inside the logarithm. Just some pre-calculus. All right, solve without a calculator. Got it. So e to the exponent 2x subtract 5 subtract 5 equals 0. Could you solve that without a calculator? So the step one is to add 5 to isolate the exponential. Write this as a logarithm. So the exponent is 2x subtract 5. The logarithm with the base of e is ln and then 5 inside. To get x by itself, you would add 5 and then divide everything by 2. Number 22. In 22, you're solving 1 subtract ln, 3 ln x equals negative 5. So for this, I'm going to add 5 and add 3 ln x. So 1 plus 5 is 6. Add 3 ln x so that makes it easier to simplify. Divide by 3. 6 divided by 3 is 2. Write this as a logarithm. Actually, it is a logarithm. Write it exponentially. Uh, so what's inside the logarithm is x. The base is e to the exponent 2. Done. And that's a good answer. 23. So f at x equals ln x subtract 1 to the 2 thirds. Now we're just taking derivatives. So let's just, can I write down a few of them? So 24 is y equals uh, t squared over ln t. And then 25, let me just write them down. g at y equals ln uh, 1 subtract. Oops, this should be plus. So 1 subtract ln y. All right, let's start with those three. So derivatives are just following rules. So they're not as interesting as integration where you have to think through what type and this, that, and everything else. So what's the derivative rule for ln? Is what you see is in the denominator. And then the derivative of that is in the numerator. So it's 2 thirds x subtract 1 to the negative 1 third, just the power property. That's number 23. Uh, number Did I write it properly? 23? I feel like I looked at the answer key and I feel like I wrote it wrong. No, it's to the 2 thirds. The answer key I got is wrong. They didn't write it to the exponent 2 thirds. Oh no, you know what they did? Is they wrote that with the property first and then took the derivative. But both are right. All right. 24. This is going to be the quotient property. So the quotient property is the bottom times the derivative of the top, subtract the top, times the derivative of the bottom, and then the bottom squared. So just to be able to apply the different derivative rules here. 25, the derivative of a natural logarithm, what you see, 1 subtract ln y, that goes in the denominator. Then the derivative of this, which is negative 1 over y, is the numerator. Done. 26. In number 26, ln y is equal to 2x plus 1 
ln x. And it says to find the derivative. And of course, you're going to have to do it implicitly. So let's do it this implicitly. So the derivative of ln y is 1 over y, but it needs the hook y prime. So this is what it's going to look like with the hook. Here is the product rule, which is the first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. And then to get y prime by itself, this is just all multiplied by y. So just rewrite it and put times y, and it's over. And if you wanted to, right here, you could see what y equals, because you could write it exponentially. So y is actually equal to e to the exponent 2x plus 1 ln x. So you could take out the y and put this in for y, and then there'd be no y in your answer. All right, 27. In number 27, we have x squared plus 2 ln y is equal to y. The, find the antiderivative there, dy by dx. Again, I'm going to have to do this um, implicitly. The derivative of x squared is 2x. The derivative of 2 ln y is 2 over y, but it needs a y prime. And y is also y prime. So I need to gather together the y primes. So I'm going to subtract y prime, and I'm going to subtract 2x. So those that have a y prime are together. Then I can factor out. And I'm not worried about simplifying it or making it look particularly pretty. I just need it to be algebraically equivalent, and then you get full credit. So then divide by 2 over y, subtract 1, and it's done. Next, 28. All right, for 28, list the domain and range without using a calculator. Nice, but no real calculus. So y equals ln x subtract 2. Let's start there. So for a logarithm, the domain comes from right in here, what h equals, which is 2. So the domain goes from 2 to infinity. You can't have 0 or a negative number inside a logarithm. Well, the range for every logarithm is all real numbers. So there's the domain and the range. The second one's similar, but it has like a square in it, right? So y equals ln x subtract 2 squared over 1. So what makes this a little different is that what's inside the logarithm will always be positive except for one number. So negative numbers become positive and positive. So there's only one number x cannot be for the domain, and that's positive 2. So positive 2 gives you the answer 0. That's a restriction. Every other number will be positive, so everything else is fine, just that x can't be 2. And the range, again, is again is all real numbers. 29. Number 29. We are getting there. Is ln x minus 2 squared equal to 2 ln x minus 2? And why or why not? So the difference between that, are they exactly equal to each other? And the difference between them is what we just did. And that is in the domain restriction. So, is ln x minus 2 squared equal to 2 ln x minus 2, right? Basically that. Are they equivalent because a property, you can write that as a product in front. And, and they're not the same because of the domain restriction. So x subtract 2 squared, you, x can't equal 0. But for this one, x has to be greater than 2. 
So there's only one restricted number here. There's an infinite number of restricted numbers over here. So they're not the same because of the domain restriction. Number 30. Is this our last one? No. All right. For this function, use a calculator. Shoot, I don't think I charged my calculator. I think it's dying or dead. Oh, I got to remember. Right now, after this video, I got to remember. So, I think I can use uh, Desmos if it's completely dead. But, I don't want to do that. So, we have g at x equaling x ln x divided by e to the x. And then find the average rate of change. That's just the slope formula, right? From 1 to 4. So that's g at 4 subtract g at 1 over 4 minus 1. So I'm going to define it right away in my calculator. All right, let me show you my calculator. So I'm going to define it just to make it easier to work with. So I'm going to press t um, graph and tab. And then I'm going to define it as um, x ln x uh, over e to the x. So there it is. X, I think I might have to go times. Oh no, I lost it. So, let me try again. Tab. All right, so I'm gonna move over here. I think I need to go times for it to like it. Yeah, so I had to go times, x times ln x for it to like it. So that when I come back here and do the calculating, then because it's defined as f1 at x, I can go control divide and I can go f1 at 4 subtract f1 at 1 and then divide that oh it died on me dang it okay so you're gonna type this in your calculator like I did I do have the answer key here I'm gonna charge up my calculator right after this but you do get the answer 0 0.033 when you do that. For B, I'll show you the setup and then you can use your calculator. So for B, the average value would be to integrate from one to four, g at x dx, and then divide it by four take away one. So again, it's okay, I think you can do that. Type that in your calculator and if you typed it incorrectly, uh, you would get the answer 0.146. So it's a good challenge for you. Can you do that without me? 30C. Is asking for. The instantaneous rate of change at one. So take your calculator. So take your calculator and press. Uh, menu and calculus and find the derivative at a point and then plug in one and so on and then just type in f1 at x dx or just f1 at x press enter see if you can do it and if you did it correctly the answer is 0.367 you don't have to round and then for d the x value where there's a horizontal tangent. So in your calculator, what I want you to do is press algebra and then solve. And then what you're gonna solve, we already defined it as F1 uh, at X. We're gonna take the derivative of that. So press the derivative button and then type in F1 at X equals zero comma X. See if you can do that. So the derivative of f1 at x dx uh, is equal to zero because that's the horizontal tangent. 
and so the derivative at 0 is about 2.59. 0.259. All right, 31. For 31, thankfully I don't need a calculator. We've got two questions left. So the region R is bounded by y equals e to the x. Uh, y equals 1, x equals 1, and x equals 3. Without using a calculator, thankfully mine's dead, uh, set up but don't integrate integrals which could be used for the following ones. So for one, the area of it. So let's just like sketch it quick so you can see it. So y equals e to the x has a y-intercept at 1 and has this picture to it. That's y equals e to the x. y equals 1 is right there where that point goes through. Uh, x equals 1. And x equals 3. So this is the region we're talking about. right here. So if I was going to set up an integration to find the area of that, we're integrating from 1 to 3, right? From 1 to 3. And then it's the top, subtract the bottom. So the top is e to the x, subtract the bottom, which is 1. And then do I find it or just set it up? Just the setup. So a Maybe I got confused at what the questions were again. So A is sketch it, which I did. Sorry. B is to set it up, which I did. The next one is the volume by revolving around the x-axis. So if I want this volume around the x-axis, there's definitely a gap there. So this is two circles. So let me just set up two radii. See how I set that up? So this is the big radius, and that's the small one. Pi r squared, pi r squared. So the big radius, you go from the line of revolution through the area to the top. So what's top subtract bottom? So the top here is e to the x. And I don't need to subtract 0, which is on the bottom. There it is. And then from the bottom to the bottom of the area, so that's 1 is the 1 take away 0, or just 1 would be the small radius. So you have the small radius and then the long radius, the big radius. So the small radius is 1, and there's the setup. D, the volume of the solid formed by square cross-sections which are perpendicular to the x-axis. So if I did square cross checks with perpendicular to which axis? Again, I think they say x. Yeah. So same bounds, no pi, it's no circle, it's squares. So from 1 to 3. And that's the formula for a square. So what represents one side length of that square? That's e to the x subtract 1. And then la part E, the volume of a solid formed by revolving the region about the line y equals 1. So here's y equals 1. That is not a washer. So y equals 1, if you revolve it around, it's solid to y equals 1. So it's a disk, so it's one circle. And if you go top, subtract bottom there for the radius, it's e to the x, subtract 1. So it's pretty similar, right? But the pi there, because it's a circle, d is a square. All right. 32, last one. Find a, b, and c so that f at x equals ax squared plus bx plus c, such that 
f at 1 equals 10 and then find it so that there's a minimum at negative 1 and 2. Okay. So step one here is we're going to plug in the points that we have. So we have one point here where we make it equal to 10. So 10 is equal to A plus B plus C. And then we have the second one for negative 1. So for negative 1, 2 is equal to, and then you plug in negative 1. And then you can add these together, and you get 8 is equal to 2a plus 2c. So there, we're off and running. The second part, if there's a minimum, you take the derivative of f at x. So the derivative of f at x is 2ax plus b. Make it equal to 0, and the x value there is negative 1. So when x is negative 1, the derivative is equal to 0, so it's a minimum. And so you have negative 2a plus b, or b is equal to 2a. How do we do here? What did I do wrong here? Oh, I know what happened. Okay, so here's the thing. Instead of adding here, what would happen if I subtracted here? You would get eight. By the way, if you added, you didn't get eight, duh. So if you subtracted here, 10 take away two, you do get eight. And A is eliminated, C is eliminated, and you're left with 2B is equal to 8. Divide by 2, and you have B is equal to 4. So that actually eliminates two variables. Pretty handy. So B is equal to 4. So if I look here, if B is equal to 4, divide by 2, that means A is equal to 2. So you got B is equal to 4. We have A that's equal to 2. And then if I want to know what C equals, I can to either one and plug in. So I'm going to plug in 2 for A. I'm going to plug in 4 for B. And then there's C. So that's 6. Subtract 6 and you get your answer. So I got B is 4, A is 2, and 4, C is 4. And by doing that, this function has a point at 110 and a minimum at negative 1, 2. All right, Mr. G Math, over and out. Proud of you for doing your homework, and until next time.